Okay, today we're reviewing over probability. Um, so just remember, probability is a uh, number of favorable over total outcomes. So what we want to happen over the total number of outcomes. Um, so for these examples, again, uh, top one, uh, what's the probability of rolling an even number on a six-sided die? So even number, there's two, four, and six. So there's three even numbers out of the six total, which reduces down to one half, um, which you can also write as 50%. And the second problem, blind taste test, 50 people are given a drink, uh, 10 Dr. Peppers, 15 Pepsis, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what's the probability of getting a Dr. Pepper? So I have 10 Dr. Peppers, that's what I want to pick, and out of the total I have 50 total drinks, and so that reduces down to one-fifth or 20%. Experimental probability is when something, uh, when we actually do like an experiment. Um, so the top is going to be the number of times we get what we want to happen, and the bottom is the total number of like uh, experiments that we did or trials that we did. So for the first one, um, we sample 500 LCD monitors and find out there's, there's defects in three of them. So what's the experimental probability that a monitor selected will have a defect? So there were three defects out of the 500. And so again, I can turn that into a, um, into a, per, or sorry, a decimal, so 0 0.006, um, which um, then I can use in my next problem. So the, right, right underneath of it, so I've got my 0 0.006, that's you know, the probability that something's going to have a defect in it. So if the company manufactures 15,240 monitors, how many are likely to have defects? So I would take the 15,240, and I would multiply it by that 0 .006. And so when I do that, I get 91 point um, something. And so I would have 91 monitors out of the entire batch that we make that are likely to have defects in them. Um, just make sure, so these are where we get into like our and or or uh, probabilities. Remember that or means that I'm going to add my two probabilities together and then I'm going to subtract um, the overlap or the and when the thing is happening at the same time. So with the first one I want to find the probability of rolling an even number or rolling a multiple of three. And so the probability of me rolling an even number is going to be again one half I've got three even numbers out of the six. Probability of rolling a multiple of three. Um, so multiples of three would be like three, six. So I've got two out of six, which reduces down to one third. And then the last piece I want to do is I want to find the probability that something is even and that it's a multiple of three. And so, um, again, the multiples of 3 are 3 and 6. Um, only 6 is an even number, so I know that there's just one out of the six numbers that is even and a multiple of 3. So I'll, when I do this, I want to do 1 half plus 1 third, and then subtract off the 1 sixth. And so when I do that, I end up with uh, 2 thirds, or 66 point, or, you know, point 6 repeating, which is 66.7%. And remember, the way that I want to write an OR equation is this would be the probability of me rolling an even or a multiple of three. Okay, so I don't know what happened there, but maybe this wasn't writing for a really long time. Um, but I'm just going to go from where I'm at here. So... Uh, probability of even and a multiple of 3 is 1 sixth because, again, with my even numbers um, and multiple of 3, 6 is the only one that's even and a multiple of 3. So I would do 1 half uh, plus 1 third minus 1 sixth. And when I do that, I get 2 thirds, which is 66.7%. And when I write an OR equation, remember it's probability of even or a multiple of three. With the next problem, it says, what's the probability of rolling an odd number or a number that is less than four? 
So again, probability, or sorry, I want to find probability of odd or less than 4. So probability of rolling an odd number, again, there's 3 odd numbers out of the total of 6, so it would be 1 half. Half the numbers are odd. Uh, probability that a number is less than 4 um, is going to be, so I've got 1, 2, and 3. So I've got 3 numbers out of the 6 are less than 4. And remember that doesn't say less than or equal to, or it doesn't say 4 or less. So I'm not counting 4, just 1, 2, and 3. So that gives me 1 half as well. And then I want to take uh, my and is that probability that something's odd and less than 4. And so um, that would be 1 and 3. Those would be two numbers out of the 6 that are odd and less than uh, 4. And so that would be 1 third. And so I do 1 half plus 1 half minus 1 third. So when I do that, I end up with 2 thirds or 66.7% again. A random pen and paper clip. We want to find the probability that we select a blue pen and a white paper clip. So I'm going to use my AND equation. So I'm going to find the probability of drawing a blue pen. And then I can also find the probability of draw, uh, drawing a white paper clip. And so when I find the probability of drawing a blue pen, um, there's 14 total pens, so I know my bottom will be 14. And there's six blue pens, so I know that I'll have a six on the top, which reduces down to three sevenths. For the white paper clip, I've got uh, 40 total paper clips, with 16 of them being white. And that reduces down to two fifths. And so to find the probability of a blue pen and a white paper clip, what I can do is I can, again, just multiply those two probabilities by each other. So I can go 3 sevenths times 2 fifths. When I do that, I get, uh, remember when you're multiplying uh, fractions, multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms, and so I get 6 over 35. If I wanted to write it as a percentage, I could do that, and it would be 17.1%. Um, this problem, we want to roll a number, so probably that we roll a number less than 3, and that the spinner lands on a vowel. So probability of a number being less than 3, um, that would be just 1 and 2, so 2 out of 6, which is 1 third. And then the probability of me landing on a vowel on the spinner that's off on the right-hand side, um, there's only one vowel, which is U, and so it would be 1 over 4 to land on a vowel. So again, I would take one-third and multiply it by one-fourth, and that would give me one-twelfth, which is 8.3%. So now we move on to conditional probability. Remember, that's going to mean like when something matters first and second. So we want to find a probability that a randomly person, uh, selected person is over 60, given that the person had no opinion on the bill. So again, whenever I see that word given, um, the thing that comes after the given is the thing that matters first. Over 60 is what matters second. So it's going to be a probability that someone is over 60, given that they have no opinion. Remember, this is first, and then this is second. kind of goes out of order. And so when I'm given a, a, a table like this, remember that the first thing that matters is that, is that there's no opinion, so I'm going to circle the column for no opinion, and then I'm just going to select the people that had no opinion, and they're over 60, which would be 40. So this would be 40 over 100, which reduces down to 2 fifths, which is 40%. With the same, same uh, table, I want to find the probability that someone selected had no opinion on the bill and that they are over 60 years. Um, remember, when I have an and, it's no longer a conditional, so this is a little bit different. So I just want to find the people that had no opinion and they're over 60, 
So that would be the 40 people again, over 60 and no opinion. But then I'm going to put it over the total instead because I don't. it's not a conditional. I don't have a first or a second. So probability that someone has no opinion and they're over 60 would just be 40 over 1,000, which reduces down to 2 over 50, which is 4%. Uh, with conditional probability with these, again, here's my formula. Um, I think I put it up at the top of the page for you guys. Um, so uh, it's always going to be the AND equation on the top. So the AND on the top, so the probability of the two things happening at the same time, and then divided by the thing that matters first. So when, I, um, so when we do these problems, so the first one... Um, what I want to do is I want to find the probability that a marble is, or is it marble? Yeah, is large and red, and then divide it by the probability that a marble is red. So on the top, I'm going to have all the large red marbles, which are, which is 10. And then on the bottom, I'm going to have the probability, or sorry, the total number of um, just red marbles, which is 14. And so that reduces down to 5 sevenths, which gives me 71.4%. In the second one, same type of thing. Um, I want to find the you know, probability of something being of a large and blue. And then on the bottom, I want to have just the probability of me having a blue, just the number of blue marbles that I have. And so again, I have six large blue marbles, and then on the bottom, I just have uh, 11 blue marbles total, so 6 over 11, which gives me 54.5%. And then the last two, so again, conditional probability. So I want to find uh, probability of me flipping a head, then rolling a multiple of three. So flipping a head is going to be the thing that matters first. Rolling a multiple of three is going to be the thing that matters second. So the probability of me flipping a head, um, again, is going to be one half. We've got heads and tails. It's my total. Probability of me rolling a multiple of three is going to be one-third, because I have three and six out of six total. And then the probability of me flipping a head and a multiple of three. Again, they're independent events, and so I'm going to uh, multiply the two probabilities together. So I'm going to go one-half times one-third, which gives me one-six there. And again, my formula for conditional probability is the and on the top and on the bottom the thing that matters first. So I'm going to do 1 sixth divided by, and the thing that matters first is that we flip ahead, so divided by 1 half. And when I do that, I get 1 third, which is 33.3%. And then the last one. This one's a little tricky, but this is, uh, this is a problem that was on the practice test for the air test. So I want to find the probability of Mr. Metzger rolling a multiple of three or flipping a head on a coin. So kind of the same thing as we had done in the previous problem, but this is just a regular or equation. So probability of me rolling a multiple of three, uh, again, is one-third. Probability of me flipping a head is one-half. And the probability of me rolling a multiple of three and flipping a head is one sixth. And so, since this is an OR equation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my probabilities together. So I can go one third plus one half and then subtract off one sixth. And so, one third plus one half and then minus the one sixth, I get two thirds which is 66.7%. And
There we go.